Hi guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. Today, we will go through the day 9 problem from the July Lead Coding Challenge. Maximum width of binary tree. Please like the video and if you are new, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss any update. Given a binary tree, write a function to get the maximum width of the given tree. The width of a tree is maximum width among all level. The binary tree has the same structure as a full binary tree, but some nodes are null. The width of one level is defined as the length between the end nodes, the leftmost and the rightmost non-null node in the level, where the null nodes between the end nodes are also counted in the length calculation. For example 1, the max width is 4. This is because we need to take into account the null nodes present in between the non-null nodes. For example 2, we can see that the width is larger in the second last level and so the program returns it. For example 3, we will again take into consideration the null nodes. That makes the width as 8. This can be achieved by using either BFS or DFS. Let's first go through the BFS. Let's take this tree as an example. We need to find the number of nodes in densely filled level while considering the null nodes between the edge nodes too. So if we index the nodes, we can see that we have 4 nodes in the last level. To achieve this, we would need a data structure that will store a pair of tree node and index. We will also need a variable to keep track of max width. We need this because it is not guaranteed that the max width will be the width of lowest level. As we are using BFS, we move across each level in an iteration. At every level, we will apply BFS. We will create a pair of tree node and index and store it in the queue wherein the index will always start from 0 for each level. We will also keep track of the start index and the end index. Now you might ask why do we need to keep track of start and end as we can just see that for any level the width is last index plus 1. To answer this let's take a case where the left node is null. Here this left node will not be added while calculating the width of level and the width here will be 3 and not 4. Same happens if the rightmost node is null. Now let's see how we keep track of start and end. At start of the loop at every level, the index of head of the queue or the first node in the queue is the start index. And while exiting the level, index associated with that node will be the end index. Now, how to calculate the index for each node? The index for a level will start from 0. So for root, the index will be 0. For nodes in other level, we will calculate the index from the parent node. For left node, the index is 2 into root index, while for the right node, it is 1 more than the left node. So the formula becomes 2 into root index plus 1. Let's take our example and calculate the index. Here, we can see that the formula works as required. Now comes the part of updating the max width. While exiting the level, we also update the max width. Max width will be the maximum of the value in max width and the current width, where current width will be end index minus start index plus 1. In this example, we can see the actual calculation of the max width, and it comes out to be 2 as it calculates for two nodes, 3 and 2. After traversing all the levels, the value in max width will be our answer. Here is the algorithm. If the root is null, we simply return 0. Otherwise, we create a queue to store the pair of tree node and index. We also initialize max width to 0 and add root with index 0 to queue. We then apply BFS on input and at the end return the max width. Now let's take a look into BFS process. We loop through the queue if it is not empty. We will first store the head of queue in variable say head. This will give us the start index. We will store the size of level as Q size, which is nothing but the size of Q. For simplicity, we will initialize the variable current element to store the current pair of node and index. Now, for each element in Q, while the Q size is greater than 0, that is, while we are at the same level, we remove the head of the Q and store it in current pair. We store the tree node from the current pair in a variable, say node. If node.left is not equal to null, we add node.left in Q with indexes 2 multiplied by index of the node in the current pair. If node.right is not equal to null, we add node.right in Q with index as 
2 multiplied by index of node and current pair plus 1. At the end, we update max width with max of max width and index of node in the current pair minus the index of node in head plus 1. Time and space complexity for this method is O of n. Let's try to calculate this with DFS. It is a recursive solution wherein we will be passing these parameters with each recursive call. We will maintain a variable to hold the value of max width which will initially be 0. We will call our function on the root node with level as 0 and index as 1. We will check if the current size of list is equal to the level. As it is, we will add the index in the list. This list will hold the index of start index for all the levels. Now, we will also update the max width. The value in max width will be the maximum of max width and the difference of index and start index plus 1 for the level. After calculations, the max width now gets updated to 1. Now, we will call DFS on left and right of node with the updated index and level. The level now becomes level plus 1 and the index updates to 2 multiplied by index. This formula is same as we saw in BFS. For the right node, the index becomes 2 multiplied by index plus 1. We will perform the calculations for our left node. As the level is same as the size of start list, we add the index in list and calculate the max width again. Now, we apply DFS on left and right child for the current node. Again, as the level and list size are same, we add the index in the list and calculate the max width. As we have completed the operations on left, we perform the calculations on the right node. This time, the level is not equal to the list size. So, we just calculate the max width. And this time, the width gets updated as it takes into account node 5 and 7. Now, as we have completed the calculations in the left subtree, we move to the right subtree and perform the same. For this node, we will call the DFS on its left and right node. As the left node is null, so the max width remains same. Now we go to the right node and calculate the max width. The max width now gets updated to 4. This completes our iteration on the tree and we return the max width. Summing it up, here's the algorithm. We initialize a variable max width to hold the result. We also initialize a start list and then we call the DFS method. In the DFS method, we check if the node is null. If yes, we return. If the index is equal to the size of the list, we add the current index in the list. We update the max width and then we call DFS on left and right of the root with the updated level and the index. At the end, we return the max width. The time and space complexity for this approach is also O of n. Here's the actual code snippet for the method. You can also find the link to this Java code in the description below. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what you think about the video.